Hello students, how are you all? Hope all of you are fine at home. Today I am back again to explain the remaining parts of the chapter electricity. So let's begin. Today's first topic is resistance in series. Here we are going to find out the equivalent resistance of all the resistors connected in series. By series connection we mean that the resistors or the resistances are connected in a single line as shown in the figure. Here we have taken three resistances R1, R2 and R3 connected in series. Let us consider that the potential difference across R1 is V1, across R2 is V2 and across R3 is V3. We know that in a series connection, the total potential difference V is equal to V1 plus V2 plus V3. In a series connection, the current I remains constant. So by applying Ohm's law, we know V equal to IR. So when we apply this Ohm's law across R1, R2 and R3, we get these three equations. That is V1 equal to IR1, V2 equal to IR2 and V3 equal to IR3. We can put these values here. In place of V, we can put IR. In place of V1, we can put IR1. In place of V2, we can put IR2. And in case of V3, we can put IR3, as you can see here. Then we can take I common here and we can cancel I from both the sides. So we get the total resistance or the equivalent resistance R is equal to the sum total of all the resistances that are connected in series. Now, let us move on to resistance in parallel. Here we can see a picture which tells us resistances R1, R2 and R3 are connected in parallel. In a parallel connection, voltage remains constant and current gets divided. So current through R1 is I1, through R2 is I2 and through R3 is I3. And the total current will be I equal to I1 plus I2 plus I3. With the help of Ohm's law, we get I equal to V by R. By applying this in all the three resistors, we get uh, the value of I1, I2 and I3. After that, we are going to put all these values in this particular equation. Then we are going to get the equation 1 by R equal to 1 by R1 plus 1 by R2 plus 1 by R3. This equation gives us the value of total resistance of all the resistances that are connected in parallel. Our next topic is heating effect of electric current. It tells us that whenever electricity passes through a wire of very high resistance, the wire becomes hot. That means heat is produced when electricity passes through a wire of high resistance. This phenomenon is known as heating effect of electric current. This heating effect of electric current is actually governed by Joule's law of heating. Let us see what it is. Now, let us find out the equation of Joule's law of heating. Let us consider an electric current I is flowing through a resistor having a resistance R. The potential difference to the resistor is V. Let the charges charge Q pass through the circuit for the time T. Then the work done in moving the charge Q will be equal to VQ. That means the product of voltage or potential difference into charge. Since this charge Q flows through the circuit for time T, 
the power input of the circuit will be equal to vq by r since vq equal to work done and t is time and we know that work done by time gives us power power is denoted by p that means it will be v into q by t we all know that q by t means i so we can write p equal to vi since electric energy is supplied for time t thus after multiplying both sides of the equation by t we get p into t is equal to v into i into t thus for steady current i the heat produced h in time t will be equal to v into i into t or h equal to v i t according to ohm's law we know that v equal to i r so by substituting v with i r we get h equal to i r into i t that means h equal to i square r t so we can say that joules according to joules law of heating the heat generated in a conductor is directly proportional to the square of the current passing through it directly proportional to the resistance and directly proportional to the time for which the electricity passes through it here are some applications of heating effect of electric current like light bulbs electric stoves soldering irons electric fuses all these things they work on the heating effect of electric current students if you want to write this down you can pause the video and write these points down in your copies now we are going to learn about electric energy we know that h equal to i square rt gives the rate at which energy is consumed in an electric circuit this is also known as electric power electric power is denoted by capital p and is given by p equal to vi the unit of electric power is watt and is equal to volt into ampere the unit watt is very small so in practical we use a much larger unit called kilowatt kilo means 1000 so 1 kilowatt means 1000 watt since electrical energy is the product of power and time the unit of electrical energy is therefore watt hour 1 watt hour is consumed when 1 watt of power is used for 1 hour for commercial purpose the unit of electrical energy used is kilowatt hour that is 1 kilowatt hour equal to 3.6 into 10 to the power 6 joule so this is the end of today's discussion and the end of the chapter electricity i hope all of you have understood the chapter properly read the chapter thoroughly and listen to the explanation to get a proper understanding of the chapter so until next time take care and stay safe